Grand Duchess Alexandra Pavlovna was born in the late 18th century into the family of Emperor Paul I and Maria Fyodorovna. From an early age, she received a well-rounded education, studying foreign languages, arts, and sciences. In the final years of that century, Alexandra was betrothed to Archduke Joseph of Austria, a union intended to strengthen the alliance between Russia and Austria. At the beginning of the 19th century, Alexandra married Joseph of Austria and became an archduchess. She engaged in charity and supported the arts, but the Austrian court treated her coldly due to her orthodox faith. A few years after her wedding, following a difficult childbirth, she passed away at a young age. Maria Sophia of Newburgh was born into the family of Elector Palatine Philip William. She received an excellent education, studying foreign languages, etiquette, and politics. In the late 17th century, she married King Peter II of Portugal, becoming queen. As queen, Maria Sophia actively supported the arts, engaged in charity, and worked to strengthen the dynasty. Her union with Peter II contributed to the kingdom's stability. Despite political challenges, she left a significant mark on Portugal's history, becoming a symbol of devotion and royal dignity. Maximilian I was born into the family of Emperor Frederick III and Eleanor of Portugal. In the year 1477, he married Mary of Burgundy, which brought the Habsburgs wealthy Burgundian territories. From an early age, he showed interest in military affairs, diplomacy, and reforms. Maximilian I significantly strengthened the power of the Habsburg dynasty. He conducted military campaigns, developed the economy, and reformed state administration. His marriage policy led to the expansion of Habsburg territories, laying the foundation for their future dominance in Europe. He also supported the arts and sciences, playing an important role in the cultural development of the Renaissance era. Isabella of Capua was born into a noble Neapolitan family and received a proper education. In 1529, she married Ferranti Gonzaga, joining one of the most influential aristocratic dynasties in Italy. In the following years, Isabella distinguished herself as a noble lady who supported the development of culture and the arts. She welcomed scholars and artists, patronized literature, and lived according to the high ideals of the Renaissance. Her life and legacy became part of the rich cultural heritage of the Italian nobility. James Compton was born in England into a noble family. He inherited the title of Earl of Northampton after his father's death in 1643. He received a good education and was involved in the country's political life from an early age. In addition, he actively supported the royal authority, striving to maintain its influence even during the growing crisis. During the English Revolution, he supported the royalists and actively participated in military actions. Despite political upheavals, he maintained his influence and continued to serve the monarchy. His actions and loyalty to the crown left a significant mark on England's history. He was not only a military leader, but also took part in diplomatic negotiations, hoping to achieve reconciliation between the conflicting sides. Eleanor of Austria was born into the family of Emperor Maximilian, the first of the Holy Roman Empire and Mary of Burgundy. As a princess, she received an excellent education and was involved in court life from an early age. In 1519, she became Queen of Portugal by marrying King Manuel I, and after his death in 1521, she returned to the Habsburg court. Later, to strengthen political TIs, Eleanor became the wife of King Francis I of France. This marriage was part of diplomatic agreements 
and she tried to fulfill her royal duties while maintaining peace between France and the Habsburgs. After her husband's death, she withdrew from politics and lived in the family's estates. Her fate reflects the important role of women in dynastic alliances, serving as instruments of diplomacy. Henry I was a king of France from the Capetian dynasty. Born into the royal family, he received an education suited to his noble status, focusing on governance, military affairs, and diplomacy. In 1027, during his father's lifetime, he was crowned to secure succession. His reign was marked by efforts to consolidate power, facing noble uprisings and external conflicts, particularly with the Holy Roman Empire. The reign of Henry I was filled with challenges. He struggled against rebellious vassals and territorial disputes, particularly with the powerful Holy Roman Empire. Despite difficulties, he worked to strengthen the monarchy, supporting feudal lords while trying to maintain control over royal lands. His rule contributed to the gradual rise of the Capetian dynasty, paving the way for its long-lasting influence in French history. Louise Elizabeth of Oral Anne's was a French princess, daughter of Philippe II, Duke of Oral Anne's, and Françoise Marie de Bourbon. She was raised at the French court, receiving an excellent education in literature, art, and court etiquette. In 1722, she married King Louis I of Spain as part of a political alliance to strengthen TIs between France and Spain. However, Louise Elizabeth's life in Spain was difficult. The young king soon fell ill, and a few months after their wedding, he passed away, leaving her a widow. Unable to adapt to the Spanish court, she returned to France. She spent her final years in seclusion, suffering from illness, and died at the age of 33. Despite her husband's brief reign, her marriage played a crucial role in diplomatic relations between France and Spain. Ahmad al Buni was born in the city of Buna, now known as Anaba, located in Algeria. He received a classical Islamic education, delving into theology, philosophy, and mathematics. He paid special attention to Sufism and occult sciences. Later, he moved to Egypt, where he continued his studies and gained recognition as a scholar of esoteric knowledge. Ahmad al Buni is best known for his work. Shams al-Ma'arif, which is considered one of the most influential books on Islamic mysticism and magic. He explored the properties of Arabic letters, the influence of numbers, and the hidden aspects of the Quran. His writings significantly impacted Sufi traditions and esoteric teachings in the Middle East. His works are still studied by followers of mystical traditions today. <laughs>